Hello, and welcome to Lore Dive, where we look into, and analyze, the stories behind all of our favorite video games. Today we are looking into the Auric chapter, All the World's a Stage. In it, we'll be seeing a bit of the backstory of Jane Romero, and her struggles before finally making it big, and becoming a household name. Jane needs a job. She has a job. She works as a waitress at a local diner. She needs another kind of job. A role. A part. Something. Anything to let her know she's on the right path. Anything to let her know she deserves more than a school variety show. Acting is a fool's pursuit. One in a billion, her father says. Her grandfather agrees but adds, those who have the courage to follow their dreams have a 99% chance of being that one in a billion. Have courage. Courage will put the odds in your favor. Jane loves her grandfather and wants to make him proud. Wants to show him he's right. I'll be that one in a billion. Jane is struggling. She's in a position that many who try to break into the entertainment industry have been in. A position of being an unknown. Trying to get an acting job when you're an unknown is like putting a message in a bottle and throwing it into the sea. Some will have their message found, if they're that one in a billion. Mexican waitress speaks in Mexican and English with a Mexican accent. Who wrote this? Mexican isn't a language. Doesn't matter, you get the gist. Her face grows warm with frustration. The accent isn't necessary. Why? Why the accent? Why can't it just be waitress? Waitress who speaks English? Why does the script need the waitress to be Mexican? Why is this important to the scene? Jane stares at the director, trying to understand his needs. It brings flavor. What does that mean? It doesn't bring flavor. It perpetuates a stereotype. Yet, Jane says nothing. She says nothing because she doesn't want to be blacklisted as a social justice warrior. Doesn't want to be called a complaining minority. With a slight Spanish accent, she finishes the audition. Jane keeps running into these same auditions over and over again as of late. They aren't looking for a character in her eyes. They are looking for a stereotype. But she's desperate. And sometimes being desperate will allow you to accept things that you wouldn't under normal circumstances. No matter how opposed to them you may be. Jane shares a beer with her friend Dwayne. Dwayne tells her how a creative executive hired him to be the co-writer of his terrible script. To be the spokesperson of his terrible idea. To validate his insensitive cultural appropriation of an African-American story. The creative executive wants to make a minority film because it's a fad. The quickest way to be recognized. The fast track to fame for a hack. Many writers told the hack his script was wrong on so many levels. Badly written, disrespectful, boring, insensitive. Dwayne refused to accept a script that was disrespectful to his cultural heritage. Refused to attach his name to a project so the executive could avoid accusations of cultural appropriation. Refused to validate an entitled interpretation of a minority story. The executive discredited Dwayne by calling him a social justice warrior. Fired him. Jane sighs sadly for her friend. At least the script won't get produced. Dwayne raises a skeptical eyebrow. The hack has a friend with money. Lots of money. He'll write, direct, and produce. Entitled hacks with friends in high places. It's how bad movies get made. They toast bad movies. Jane laughs. Not because it's funny, because it's true. There are plenty of people in this world with money and ambition, but without common sense, talent, or the will to put in the effort to make something worthwhile. And this one in particular is trying to make a quick buck off of a story that they know nothing about. Nothing to be done. No way to stop it. Sometimes you can only sit back and laugh at the absurdity of it all. It's been months. She hasn't worked. No calls. No auditions. Nothing. Jane stares at the blank television screen. As a child, she used to imagine herself on television. She doesn't see herself on television anymore. Something is happening. 
She can't see herself succeeding anymore. She wishes for her shot, her one shot, her one in a billion shot, but scripts for her are few and far between, nothing beyond the stereotype. Her agent shouldn't care, he should put her forward for all the female roles in her age range. She can play any female role, lead or support, and yet she only gets auditions for the spicy Latina, or the funny immigrant, or the waitress with the accent, never just woman, American. That's all she wants. She stares at the snowy television, tries to visualize herself as the star of a show, but can't. The phone rings, her agent, an audition, a major part in a play, and it pays well. For a moment, just a moment, she feels like one in a billion. A rush of hope. Maybe something that Jane has fought for will be worthwhile. She has an audition, one that doesn't require her to play into stereotypes. A real role. A real chance to show what she can do. There's only one thing left. Take the plunge and hope for the best. Jane's cell phone rings. She freezes on the sidewalk. This is it. And she doesn't know if she wants to answer or not. She can't take another rejection. Not for this part. This part is too important. She brings the cell phone to her ear, answers. She hears a voice she recognizes, her agent. He tells her how everyone enjoyed her audition, how everyone thought she was just fantastic. He goes on about something else. She waits for the but, the proverbial but, a thousand compliments negated by one single, all-destroying but. It doesn't come. She listens to the trivial notes and waits for the polite rejection. Instead, You got the part. She's not sure she heard right. You got the part. She mumbles to herself. I got the part. Her face grows numb with disbelief. She screams. Strangers turn to face her. Sorry. Dwayne helps Jane rehearse at a cafe. They take a break and he tells her the hack is now doing a Chinese story and is desperately searching for a Chinese writer to validate his most recent abomination. Jane laughs. Hacks with money, it's how bad movies get made. She tells Duane things are going well with the play. She doesn't have to do an accent. Doesn't have to wear a miniskirt or perpetuate a ridiculous stereotype. Doesn't have to do all the stupidities she had to do in the past. This is a real gig. A meaningful gig. A gig she can share with her family. She knocks on the table. Duane laughs and says it isn't wood. She shrugs. He says he's happy for her and hands her a cutout from a magazine. Open audition for Quick Talk. He says he put in a good word for her. She'd make a perfect host. She thanks him, but the play takes all her time. Too bad. You're the most real person I know, and that's what the show needs. Authenticity. She got the job. Finally, she'll have a respectable acting position. Her friend Dwayne has also provided her with another alley, should she need it. But right now, she has what she needs. A role. A real, honest-to-goodness role. Things are looking up for Jane Romero. Nothing could possibly screw this up for her. Right? Last rehearsal before opening night, and she's nailed her role despite some last-minute changes to the script. She feels the adrenaline and a great sense of flow unlike anything she's ever experienced before. The director claps after the last line is delivered. He approaches her, tells her he's amazed, impressed, inspired. But he feels her character would work better with an accent. A what? The request undermines her, shatters her. Why? I don't understand. For giggles. It would be fun. The character doesn't need an accent. The character is fine without an accent. But it would add comic relief. Comic relief! That's what she is to this director. To the producers. To this industry. Comic relief. She stares at him. Waits for him to burst out laughing. Waits for him to say he's joking. Waits for an apology that never comes. She sighs and feels the strength of her ancestors coursing through her veins, a strength that won't allow her to sell out, 
a strength that won't allow her to perpetuate a hurtful image of what it means to be an American. She shakes her head at the director. Find a comedian, asshole. She storms off stage. Those who follow their path beat the odds, even if the odds are a billion to one. Bullshit. Jane may not be in a good position, but she has her self-respect, her honor. She isn't going to let a director with limited imagination and prejudice make her compromise who she is. Luckily for her, though she doesn't know it, the biggest role in her life is right around the corner. She'll come out to the world in a position she carved for herself. She will stand in that spotlight and play the character she was meant to play, herself. She is Jane Romero, and the world will soon know that she is no mere player to be brushed over and ignored. The world will see her as she likes it, for all the worlds a stage. <laughs>